So at this point, we're pretty much at the end of the course, and our project is pretty complete. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at my index file in Firefox just to, to show you something. Obviously, it's not going to be fully functional because it needs to be inside of uh, a, a Cordova environment. But just looking at it, um, oh yes, and one more thing, I did a little tweak here. Remember we had about button, alert button, and the add class button. That alert button was just a clue of concept to make a pop-up happen. We don't, we didn't need it, so I removed that and just put in the class list. And again, this is not going to fully work because it's it's not in um, it's not in an app environment. So it doesn't work, but that's okay. Um, the about I there was some gibberish right there, which I fixed. Just finished the thought. Customize. The difference here is I I went here get directions. And now there's that background, white color. Having this customized color, uh, I realized that all of this text was in a table that was transparent. So that we were seeing this black text on this green color, and it was a little hard to read. So I just went in and added that, that color. It's, it was color called white smoke. And then just added a little roundness to the edges of, the, of that table, just for fun. And over on the art screen, we had left these empty. So I just went over to Wikipedia and borrowed some text. I put some text into these art, into these little art screens. Calendar's the same, catalog kind of works. PC, we had left these also. Uh, we, would, we said we'd get back to these. So now when you click on these, it'll just say some text. And so now it has content that we would that we say we'll get back to it, but we never quite did, and that's okay. But uh, now I've completed this content right here, and what we're going to do is okay. I had said last time you needed to edit your config XML file to have your details, which we did. So right now, if you came in a little bit late. From my network folder, you want to copy the www folder only so that it doesn't erase your config file. Um, and um, what we'll also do, one more thing to make it unique. Everyone, if everyone's using my project, it also looks exactly the same. Everyone's got the same color scheme. We're, we're going to take a short moment five, maybe ten minutes at the very most, I'm shooting for five minutes, for us to change, for you to change your color scheme. I don't want everyone to have the same color scheme. I'm going to remind you how to change it, and then I'm going to give you about five, ten minutes at the most for you to change your color scheme so that we don't all have the exact same color. We're then going to do one final look at our code, do the uh, Cordova build release, one last time, we'll go over that one more time, and then we'll create the developer account and publish our app. So, first step I want to do here is I want to talk, I want to remind us on how to change our, our color of our app. We're all using my color palette here. So what we want to do is go to the web browser. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. jQueryMobile.com. Remember here we look up the demos, the read the documentation, etc. And we go to design our own theme colors under themes. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com and then let's open themes or click on themes. Just drag our old MyStyle file over to the name of the same thing. You, what do you mean your old one? From, from Tuesday? Yeah, if, uh, and it's fine that it might have the same name because that would be okay. If you've got yours and you want to use yours, 
yeah, give that a try. I'm going to show this method again here, which might be useful. Uh, and so jQuery Mobile, the theme roller. On my particular project, I had been using theme B to, uh, to customize the look of my project. So heads up then, you want to be customizing B in order for your app to change. So what we're going to do is take five minutes for you to design an A and a B color theme. And then we'll go through the process quickly again of adding this new color scheme to our project. So, so I don't want everyone to have the same green and yellow as me. Take a moment to design new color scheme for A and for B. 621. Let's shoot for 625 at the most. Now remember, here's something that you can be spending a lot of time on to get this perfect. 
Uh, I don't want to spend very, very much time on it. It's 625. I don't uh, want to go too much further, but as long as you've got a different color scheme than the one I gave you, at the beginning of the day, we're going to proceed. So you can always come back and keep editing this. Uh, but my concept is we're all going to design a brand new color palette for our app. We need to integrate it with our project. So before we go further, in our WW folder, here's all of our project files. And we have a file called mystyle.min.css. That is the style sheet that we created a while ago, last month, October 28th. Um, that's what we created last month uh, to design our own color for our project. I mentioned that because the easiest way to update this color, I've just chosen this new color palette here. The easiest way to replace the orange color or the yellow color that I have is to replace this file with the new colors. So keep in, the, in mind that this custom color is my style min. When we are in the theme roller, we're going to use that name so that it gives us a file that we can just drag, drag and drop into the project to replace the old colors, like this. I've got my colors designed. I've chosen an A and a B. I kind of don't like that blue anymore, but that's okay. That's a little better. Okay, so at the top right, you want to click download. Download the theme zip file. And what I'm saying is at the top right of this download screen, what theme name what name are you giving this? That's basically the name of that CSS file in that folder. The project has a file called my style dot min dot css. It'll write the dot min dot css for us. So right here, if you write my style, after we complete this step, all we need to do then is just drop this brand new color scheme into our project and let it replace the old one and we'll get this new color scheme. Instead of choosing a completely different name here, then we'd have to rewrite our code in the index file and the dir file to access this new style sheet. We're just going to replace the existing one. So on this screen here, what's the name of our theme? Just my style. Click download zip. I'm going to save that. And then uh, up on the download link, I'm going on the download screen. I'm going to click that to, to view my zip file, wherever it downloaded to, probably the desktop. You want to go view the zip file, open the zip file. So you should get something like jQuery mobile theme, some numbers.zip inside of the zip file. We've got index and themes. Inside of themes, you should have mystyle.min.css. If yours is named something else, that's okay. We can fix it in a moment. But it's minus mystyle.min.css. So from my zip folder, I'm then going to simply drag that into my project folder. So here's my www folder of my SDCE project. And I'm going to drag from here the zip file into the project going to pop up. Do you want to copy and replace or don't copy? I want to copy and replace. I want to replace the one from last month with the one of today. And my clock says 2 in the morning. Or something. I don't know. But this is the one from last month. My old colors. The one that we all have right now, which I don't want. I want you to have your own unique colors. So just drag it over and then select copy and replace. We want this new version of the colors. And that's it. If you open your index file again in, in Firefox, there's my new colors. The new color should also apply when you go to the DIR screen. That's a really weird color. Map. There's the map. That should work because we've got 
we, re we reused the same name, mystyle.min. And both the index and dir were referencing a, a CSS file called mystyle. We just replace that old one with our new one, new colors. Let's take a moment to make sure we've all got that, and then we'll go on. Does anyone need a little help getting that to work? I want everyone to have their own unique color scheme here. Anyone need any help? Speak now forever. Hold your peace. Okay, so this is our project. Let's open the index file in Notepad. Let's, edit, let's go back to edit the code. I've got the index file open and it's uh, 322 lines of code or so. I want to do one quick glance at my code to see if there isn't anything that I don't need. Maybe we added some code that we commented out that we really don't need and such. This would be, we're not really going to spend time doing this, but this would also be a point where maybe I would want to go in and add, and add comments to myself now that the project is pretty much done. But uh, I'm just going to kind of browse around. If you see anything that stands out that we might want to address, let me know. But I'm just going to do a quick page down to see if anything stands out. I'm just looking to see if I see any commented code. So I took a quick browse. I don't see any, any errant code, perhaps. If you do, let me know. But um, again, I might take a moment to write some comments for myself here to remind myself, what does this do? What was that about, etc. For example, as I said, we're not going to do this, but for example, line 310, it says slash section. Off the top of my head, just looking at that line, I don't know what's, what end of that section actually is. So if I wanted to, I could go back in and add a comment at the end of line 310 to tell me, oh, that's the end of my, my class list screen. So that's my idea, just to going in and add comments here and there to remind myself what my code does. We've been working on it for two months. There's parts that we haven't worked on it and in a while. So I'm just going to do one of these as an example. On line 310 at the very end of the line, I'm going to write end class list screen. And that would be something that I would go throughout my project here and there just to make some notes, especially when we get to an end slash section. We don't remember what was that screen again, what page is that? And just giving myself a comment, I know for myself, helps me when I come back to my code later. I want to make more changes because ideally you're putting out, we're going to p finish this project and put it out and if we had extra time. Then we would talk about adding more features to the project and then releasing a version 2 of the project. So when we come back to our code, our under comments will help us remember what we've done. I'm going to do the same thing now in, uh, take a quick look in the CSS file. I'm sorry, the, the DIR file in the CSS. Let's open the DIR file. We'll do a quick survey of that project, of that uh, project section. Hmm. That reminds me, line 14. We never addressed the uh, content security policy that was making our map not quite work. I don't have an answer to fully fix that, so we're going to leave it as is. We might make a comment in here, line 15, fix this maybe one day. 
able to figure out what the problem was with it. Perhaps what we could also do with line 24 is a reference to jQuery 172. Um, if you recall, way back when we created the, this screen, I was saying that this version of the Google Map does not seem to function if we add a newer version of jQuery. If we add it, if we connect it to jQuery 214, then the map doesn't work anymore. Most likely because here, then, on um, this line where it's got a reference to the Google Map, it's saying version 3. I don't know what the current version of it is. I don't know if simply putting equals 4 or 5 or whatever will then update the map to work. It might work, but then perhaps our code will be outdated and such. So here's an example of it works. If, it's, if it works, don't, don't fix it. But if we had the time, we would figure out to use the latest version of jQuery and maybe the latest version of the Google Map. Again, we could save that for a version 2. We've got all of this script that's working, but it's within this project. Perhaps we could move it over to its own JS file in the future so that we can reuse this code if necessary on a different screen. Right now the map only works in the DIR file. If I wanted this to work elsewhere, I'd move it to a JS file. Adding, I could add comments here and there to further define our code. Oh, there's this block of code here that we never activated. That was that pop-up screen. Step-by-step, uh, step we get a pop-up. Maybe we do want to use it in the future, so I'm going to leave that. And then our actual design here. And then we've got a comment at the very end, which was a link back to the original example that could be removed possibly since we've got a copy of that since you probably have a copy of that link elsewhere let's look at the CSS file so right now we're doing a pre-flight check where last time we did do Cordova build release but there's still a few things here and there that we might want to uh, you know tie some loose Tie, tie up some of the loose ends and then do another release. I'm looking at the CSS file. It doesn't seem to be anything here that I need to, to address. Again, I could write myself some comments like div image crop. Hopefully, just by the, the class name that we wrote here, this might remind me what does that do? Close btn write. Anyone remember what that's about? Line 10. Over. That panel that slides up. Exactly. On the panel, we added a button that would be on the right side of it. So that might be nice to write a comment to remind us of that. We're not going to do it, but that's the point of doing this pre flight, just commenting our code. Maybe we don't even need this line one here. Obviously, this is our custom code. I am going to take that out, actually. Obviously, it's our custom code now. So my line one just starts, just starts there. And then uh, we'll take a quick look at the JS file. Right away I see also put your custom code here. I'm going to clean up, I'm going to clean that up on the um, on the JS file. I'm going to take out line one just so that the document add event listener is my very first line. I see I've got an alert there. That was back in the days when we were learning about on device ready. We know what that does, we know how that works. I'm going to remove that line. I don't really need that alert anymore. So I also cleaned out line four. We've got, we've got these different code blocks that at the moment don't do anything, but I might want to use them later. Alert dismissed. What is alert dismissed? Anyone remember what that was about? Alert dismissed is tied to my alert. When we make these pop-up boxes, there is a callback. What happens after we close that, that, uh, that pop-up box? We had it simply say something to the console, vibrate, and play a sound. We might use that later. Do you see, however, if this was our real 
project that we were uploading for real to the web, if we removed both of these, all of these lines here from lines 6 to 20, we'd save a few bytes. We're not using this at all in the project, really. For example, this my alert button doesn't even exist. So this could be you know, leftover code that we can save a few bytes here and there um, as we clean things out and, and release some of that space that was used it makes the app a little more efficient. Oh, going even further, we have this take photo. You know, we don't even have the functionality to take a photo at the moment. So all of that stuff we could take out. Uh, oh, even further to go, oh, actually all the way to 37. All of those lines there, those also have to do with the photo. Take photo the button to make the button to make take photo work on success of the photo on fail of the photo. We don't have any photo capabilities. That's a, you know that's about uh, 30 lines of code that could be removed that could save us some that could make our app more efficient. I'm gonna say let's actually let's do remove the code we're not using because you should have a copy somewhere and of course you can get it back from my network folder. But in the interest of making your app more efficient, I'm gonna say between lines six and 37, let's delete all that code. It doesn't do anything in our project. Right, we don't have anything that's alert dismissed. We never have that my alert use, used. We never have that take photo. So lines 6 to 37. So my on device ready function starts with navigator.splash screen hide and then goes on to all of this pouch stuff. I could write a comment there to say pouch functionality. And that goes on for more than a hundred lines or something, doesn't it? 106 all the way down to 136. Yes, yeah, so 130 lines to so make pouch work. Okay, if you scroll down to 138, that's our that's our window dot open, and then 142. I see a bunch of comments there that we can remove. We've got get name when we uh, when we ask the user to type in their name. That's that functionality. But we've got these comments: some alerts, some local storage, notes for ourselves, and such. Let's remove that. Line 143 to 145, we've got these notes. We were making notes a while ago when we were dealing with how to save the user's name into the app. We had this local storage method, but then um, we were using the old prompt, the old JavaScript prompt, and instead we replaced it with the Cordova navigator.notification.prompt method, which gave us more customization. So I'm going to delete those. Oh, what, why is that? This is the JavaScript file, kodika.javascript. Yes. And then we've got alert, just so that we can see the name, and then display that on screen, but we moved it down to on prompt. So that means lines 151 and 50, where we've got that alert. And display the name. We're going to delete those comments because we added them over to a more robust on prompt function. Load name. That was to display the user's name if they have given a name. We've got that event listener for the button, so that's all good. And then at the very end, a few notes that we wrote when we were learning JavaScript versus jQuery. So delete those, saving a few more bytes. And those add up. So at this step, I looked at the four main files of my project, index, dir, Kodika CSS, and Kodika JS, just to kind of clean out things that maybe were vestigial and such.
Any questions so far? We'll do one more thing and then we will publish our app again or compile our app. Uh, let's go back to the index file. Let's go back to the index file and then go all the way to the end of the project. And let's go to line, let's create a brand new line 322. Create a brand new line right above your the end of the project, the HTML. What we're going to do here is create a comment block so we can give ourselves some credit here. Starting comment, HTML comment, and then ending. I'm going to write project, uh, project name, designer name, Let's do it backwards. Designer name, then project name, project version, date. So we're just filling in a little bit of credits for ourselves here. Designer, uh, let's say developer name, actually. So right here, just fill in your information. So your information, obviously. Now this is completely optional, but uh, if you pass your code around or have other people look at it to help you with it, and maybe if you open source it and such, here's a simple block where you give yourself some credit. We're going to do something similar to the DAR file, CSS file, and JS file. But the um, the DIR file is HTML, so it would use the same HTML comments. But the CSS file and the JavaScript file use a different comment tag, if you recall. So I'm going to copy this block, the actual content, just that, not the comment. I'm going to copy that, and then I will add it the same way to the index, uh, to the DIR file. So you can go to your DIR file and then at the very end, I guess after line 136, so on the DIR file I added the same comment block right there. I'm going to go to the CSS file next. And then also at the end, but this time I will use the comment block that looks like this. This is the valid comment block for CSS slash asterisk. And I'll add the same info. And this will actually, this type of comment then also works for the JS file. So we'll add We'll add that to the 
we'll add that to the JS file. So I'm going to go to my codica.js file all the way at the end. Same sort of thing. So now all four of the files of the project have this credit for myself, for yourself. Yes, function on device ready starts on 3 and it goes all the way down to 136. Yes. Okay, so we've made changes obviously to this project. That means we need to recompile it. We need to redo that. Um, the um, Cordova build Android dash release. Before we do that, we need your JKS file, your key store. Remember from last time. So we don't need to create it again unless you forgot your password. And you can do that during the break. But I assume you still have your JKS file from last time. Uh, and that was all on instruction number nine. Remember in the network folder I gave you instruction number nine. So um, if you if you open, we're looking at the project in the WW folder. You need to back up to the previous folder. So in our project here, we're going to back up and go into the platforms folder, Android folder, and a couple of things need to be changed. Uh, well, probably not, because if you only copied the WW folder, this is still the same, if you think about it. If you only copied my WW folder from the network folder, yours should still be the same. Do you see uh, project uh, no, uh, release signing dot properties. Remember, we created that last time. And in this file, this points to your JKS file. In my particular project, if you copied my whole project, you've got this. And if you're using yours from last time, yours should still be in place. And so We, don't, we actually then don't need to do anything here, but as a reminder, inside of this is just a plain text file, release-signing.properties. If you want to take a quick look at it one more time to remind yourself, it just has two things. One line that says store file, notice the capital F, equals the name of the JKS file, the key store, the developer certificate we created last time. Right there, if you're apps.jks, whatever yours is. And inside the JKS file, we made a uh, we made a particular user, an alias. So we've got key alias equals, in my case, Victor Apps, whatever you called yours. And as I had recommended, when we created the JKS file, we gave it a name, Victor Apps, for example. And then the alias inside of it, same name. For more security, you can change the JKS name and the alias name, and then the two passwords for more security, but then that means you have to remember more. In any event, mine is, I don't need to make any changes, you might need to, if you do we're going to take a break soon, but okay, I've got my I've got my files edited and saved and commented. My release signing project file is, I didn't have to make any changes, it's ready. My JKS file is in there, and um, Uh, I forgot to say last time, and I'll say it now. 
after we do the Cordova build release that we'll do in a moment, you then want to remove your JKS file from the project. You don't want to leave your developer certificate in your project folder. Um, someone could possibly use that file, let's say for some reason they get a hold of that, of your project folder, your whole project, let's say you, you put it out there for free for people to, to use an example. Whoops, did you also put your JKS file in there? So that one you don't want to keep it after you've built your project like we're going to do in a moment, you want to then remove the JKS file from that folder. Every time you're going to build it again, you need to put that back in. But in any event, um, my project files look like they're good. I'm going to back up to my folder here so that I can shift right click command window. Let's open the command window now. Shift right click my SDCE project folder, open command window. <coughs> and according to my instructions or your memories, what do we type here to, to create the final version of our project? Cordova. Build Android. We've done that all along. What's the last thing? Dash, dash, two dashes, release. Enter. This is a brand new version that needs to be compiled. We've made changes to it. So we need to build it again with our release certificate. So let that process wait for that pop up to pop up. Put your password twice, and you're going to get that. You're going to get that final version of the project. And when we're done with that, then we've got our quote-unquote final version. And we'll shift gears to creating the developer account. So what I'll do actually right now, uh, let's take a break between 7 and 7.10. Let's make sure we're all on the same page at this point. And then at 7.10, we'll, we'll do that developer account. Oh.